Hello everyone, how you doing on this fine day? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello, my name is Noah. This is uh, the bookworm. And we talk anything and everything to do with books and game books and all that sort of jazz. This month was Jurassic June and the first book I decided to read, which it was a good book. It was a good book. And that book is Jurassic Park by Michael. I'm not even going to pronounce his last name because for some reason, even though everyone tells me how to pronounce his last name, my mouth cannot do that. I cannot pronounce it. And I, I wish I could tell you why, but I can't. Yes, Jurassic Park. Uh, this, the first thing that my, my girlfriend Jenny told me was, this is completely different from the movie and she could not be any more right. The, it was an experienced read. It was a 400, oh my God, how many pages was this? 458 pages of... An experience is, is the best thing I can say. So the first thing I want to say in the first 28 pages of this book, it was so different from the movie. It's so like, like, I mean, the whole thing's different from the movie, but the first 28 pages, I was like, this is really interesting. The first thing is, is, is the beliefs it says about the people within, within uh, Costa Rica. And uh, a young kid who's injured uh, keeps talking about a raptor and everyone there is like, we don't talk about raptors to this doctor, this female doctor. And this female doctor is trying to understand what's going on, what hurt this person. This looks like an animal type, like they've been mauled. And they're like, no, it was machinery. And the kid's like, raptor, raptor, raptor. Now, raptor to people where this is put is, uh, I guess, Spanish, is a superstition. Um, and it basically means a person or a man who comes in the night and takes children. So everyone's like, listen, a woman's about to give birth. We don't talk about these things. It is, um, I'm going to pronounce something really bad. It's the Hupia, H-U-P-I-A. I probably butchered that. I probably should have, you know, got a Google thing to be like, this is how you say it and still say it wrong. And then that translates to a, a the spirit or a ghost of a person who died on an island and kidnapped children. And the whole beginning of the first 20 pages was about this, about the beliefs and this is what people thought it was. And uh, and then in English, the one was looking up in English and it was like, oh no, raptor, raptor means bird of prey. And things kind of happen. And there's this really interesting bit on page 28 where I realized as it was doing this little build up for the, the introduction of the book, I'm gonna read it. Um, Eleanor is a nurse who works with the doctor, I believe. Yeah, yeah, Eleanor is uh, uh, um, someone who works with with, with uh, the women who are pregnant, giving birth and stuff like that. A maternity nurse uh, with the with a female doctor. The female doctor's gone somewhere else uh, to do something with another uh, patient. Um, and this Eleanor woman is basically just making sure that the mother who's just given birth is comfortable and also the child is. And on page 28, I, this, the build up for this gave me chills and I was so excited. And then this happened and I was like, holy shit, this is amazing. And it basically, this, this is what it says. I'm going to read it to you. Eleanor opened the door. The infant lay in a wicker ba uh, bassinet. Me saying things wrong like usual. Swaddled in a light blanket, only its face exposed. Around the rim of the bassinet, Three dark green lizards crouched like gargoyles. When they saw Eleanor, they cocked their heads and stared curiously at her, but did not flee. In the light of her flashlight, Eleanor saw the blood dripping from their snouts. Softly chirping, one lizard bent down and with a quick shake of its head, tore a ragged chunk of flesh from the baby. Eleanor rushed forward, screaming, and the lizards fled into the darkness. But long before she reached the bassinet, she could see what had happened to the infant's face, and she knew the child must be dead. The lizards scattered into the rainy night, chirping and squealing, leave behind only bloody three-toed tracks like birds. And, the, 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 like, I missed out this whole build-up as I, as I read this that bit to you. And the build-up, just that one bit about how scientists assume a lot of things, and, and things get pushed around, and the stupidity of... of People in general, let alone if it's scientific people, was mind-boggling, gave me chills and creeps for this build-up. And when that happened, I was like, damn. 
And I just thought the whole build-up about the whole beliefs of, of what Raptor meant to a lot of people about these ghosts and spirits who take these children. Technically, they weren't wrong, but they weren't right either. Because either way, these children, that the, all these cases start popping up about these children being bitten by these little lizards. That can't be dinosaurs, no. Uh... Are, are ghosts and spirits or of men who who do this instead and i just love the build for that and i kind of wish they kept a lot of that in the rest of the book because the book does change as it goes on especially with the characters because the characters in this book compared to the movie are completely different too and i never hated so many characters in one book but i love the book at the same time which is weird because normally if i'm loving a book i love the characters not this time no 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 this book is very much a sci-fi horror. It's more sci-fi than horror, but it has enough to, to really give you the, the chills as you read it. Within the first, like, as I keep talking about the 28 pages, the first 28 pages, like the introduction of the book, not only do we get attacks already happening, but we're also jumping between characters and places and kind of like time jumps a little bit. There's a lot of assumptions going on uh, being made. It made me want to literally slam my head into something really hard probably a brick wall because i was like why are these assumptions being made and why is nothing doing it are these people this stupid and the answer is yes they are the other thing that i really do like about this book is the different use of media so obviously it has things to do with charts uh, s uh reports from different people and world scientists uh computer reports all these little things that it does that throughout it where they're, they're, they're sorting something out on the computer and it goes into the binary and, and different sort of hacking codes and stuff like that. And then it'll go to, let's say, more sort of charts going on. Uh, oh, there's there's another one that got a different type of like graph going on. It all makes sense because something's happening. It's describing stuff and it's like, here's the proof of how this would be. And that was pretty cool. I did like that they put that format into it because not a lot of books do that. And when I do read a book that does that, it, it literally, it uplifts the book even more for me. The one thing that really did irk me in this book, I'll go into the characters in a minute, is the unneeded jargon of science. More like common sense and science just kind of slammed together, just kind of like wrapped up in a ball and it's repeatedly like thrown into your face. Most of it's common sense and they keep driving in chaos theory throughout the whole book and it's like i get it i get the chaos theory i understand chaos theory i get some people may not understand chaos theory that's why it explains it in the book but you do not need to keep repeating it to me along with all the other scientist jargon i do like though that he did get a lot of uh paleontologist oh my god i don't know why i bother trying to pronounce this he had robert um backer john horner John Ostrom and Gregory Paul, who are paleontologists. Oof, I hope I said that word right then. And some illustrators and all the other people, he does say thank you to them, acknowledge them in the back of the book, who did, answer, who with a lot of science in the book, they helped with that and be like, well, this could be one thing, this could be another. Dinosaurs were not cold-blooded. This is the reason why. They were warm-blooded and so on and so forth. I, oh, I never even thought about that growing up. Like, like, even to stay, I have lizards. I have a crested gecko over here that you can't see. I've got fucking snakes in, in the in the other room. And obviously cold-blooded. I never even thought of thinking about this dinosaurs were cold-blooded or warm-blooded. I love that they explained stuff like that to us. I was fascinated by that. And that's what really pushed me to keep reading it. The only thing is, is obviously I didn't like any of the characters in this book. They're completely different from the movie. The two main characters that we have um grant and i can't remember what the female's called unfortunately who looks at uh jurassic and jurassic like like uh plants i was gonna say green things but they'll be plants um they're not dating she's actually marrying another guy uh, later on in the year next year he was married but his wife died and, and he kind of talks a little bit about that with the kids that are brought in hammond the guy who creates Ju jurassic park I've never read such an unhinged, mentally unstable, I would even assume that he would be on the spectrum of some sort with how, f like, focus he is on the dinosaurs. 
compared to everyone and everything else. He's a terrible, terrible man. Watching the movie, Jurassic Park the movie, when I was younger, I was like, oh, I love this character. He's the granddad of dinosaurs. He's a granddad. He's love that. Like, he reminds me of my granddad. He's lovely. Not in this book. He could care less about his grandchildren that he brought to his island. No one wants them, as he says in this book. They're horrible. They're terrible. They shouldn't. He shouldn't even brought them onto the island. No one loves them and no one cares for them. The kids themselves drive me nuts. I hated the little girl in it. So in the movie, we have the little boy, Tim, and Lexi, or Alexis, as you want to call her. She was the older sibling, and he was the younger one. The little girl was sporty, but she was a hacker. That is not the case in this book. She is seven to eight years old, and Tim is 11. Tim was an okay character. Out of the kids, he was okay. Lexi, little girl, was whiny. I had nothing that she brought to the story apart from anger I felt when things were happening and they're like you should not move and be quiet and she's like I'm gonna do the exact opposite of everything you say I'm not gonna shut up and I'm gonna annoy every single person in this book there was a bit where I thought that she actually died in the book I was so happy I was so happy until I realized she wasn't yeah well that's okay but also there's also a lot of flipping between characters as well. Throughout all the chapters, there's a lot of chapters in this book, 458 pages, and there's a lot of flip-flop between each individual characters, and I liked that. Normally I don't like so many point of views, but it made sense with the story because you could see things going on with different characters at the same time, what they were experiencing, and it actually built up the atmosphere to the, to the, to the story. It, it does enough while like spewing all the scientific, real scientific things at you, it's okay. It, it it just it lowered. See, I would rate this like five. I would I would have rated this five stars, but I've lowered it down to four because the amount of times it throws chaos theory in my face and other common sense things, it was just like, please stop. I get it. I get it. I like that you're showing me things and explaining things to me, but you're explaining the same thing in different ways, multiple times throughout the story. You, ugh, Hammond, Hammond, Hammond can go fall and chip a tooth, and when he does fall. I'm very happy because compared to like the, the movie, I was so happy when he died. His death brought me life. It really did. It really, really did. The story is amazing, completely different from the movie. I would definitely say read it. A lot of things happen in this compared to the, the um, that happened in the first and second one a little bit. There's some funny bits that happen in this, don't get me wrong, it's definitely sci-fi horror, but there's certain comedy bits where some things happen and it's like, oh, that went, like, imagining it. It's kind of funny, I did laugh and giggle about certain things. But uh, story-wise, it was absolutely mental. It's definitely a good read, worthwhile. Uh, just be careful about the scientific stuff that do that does get spewed out at you. If, if you're not really into science sort of stuff, it might not be for you. Just remember that this is different from the movie, you should definitely give it a read. Characters, I... Really didn't like any of the characters. No one really stood out to me. A lot of characters annoyed me, which made sense when things happened. I liked that. When things happened to them, I was really excited about that more than anything. It really drove that in for me. Uh, Rereadability. Would I read this again? I probably... 50-50 chance of me reading this again. It's definitely going to stay in the bookshelf. I think it's definitely something to have in the collection. It's definitely worthwhile. There are other books to the series as well that he wrote after the other movies that came out, so definitely might be giving them a read. It, well, it had some fun factor in it. It had certain bits where I did laugh out loud. Even on the reading sprint that we did, I was laughing out loud. But I at four out of five, more than anything. Definitely one to keep worthy of staying on the shelf, but that's really it for me. If you've read Jurassic Park, let me know what your thoughts are on this. I would like to talk to some people about this and the characters because the characters drove me nuts. Thank you for watching the video. I really appreciate it. Stay awesome, be good, make good decisions in life, and love, love. We will be doing a live reading uh, of Splatosaurus. That is going to be on the 12th at 8 p.m. GMT. Stay awesome, my dudes. I'll catch you next time. Peace.